Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for being here and for your fantastic work. Um, I, I just wanted to have you all uh, take a few minutes to delve a little bit deeper into uh, the crisis in Afghanistan. Um, I, this started as one of the world's poorest countries, and it has um, descended into what is really now the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Um, and I'd like you all to give us a little bit of advice as to how uh, we best unlock the significant amount of money that the United States currently has um, in its possession and at its disposal to try to address this crisis. Um, in February, President Biden authorized $3.5 billion, that's about half of Afghanistan's frozen assets, to be used, quote, for the benefit of the Afghan people. But um, three months later, we have not yet figured out what that international financing mechanism is it still hasn't been set up. Um, and so what advice would you give the administration? What advice would you suggest we give the administration as to how to push that $3.5 billion? Because um, it, it cannot be that we can't um, both save lives um, while also not unjustly enrich the Taliban. There is a mechanism by which to get this money as directly um connected to the Afghan people uh, as uh, as possible. So um, certainly, I'll start with you, Mr. Beasley, but I'd love comments from all three of our panelists. Yeah. Senator Murphy, I mean, this is one of the things we've been talking about from the beginning because of the lack of funds that we have globally. And then when Afghanistan hit, we were already, right before Afghanistan, we were talking about the crisis uh, that we're facing around the world. And Afghanistan hit, a nation of four, over 40 million people, uh, 23 million people, or an IPC 345. I mean, that's just unheard of. Eight point, give or take, seven million are knocking on famine's door. So we were like, look, we don't have enough money. Uh, so what we did with the World Bank, because the World Bank couldn't give it to the Taliban, and so we actually sat down with the Taliban and said, look, no one's going to give you money. Let it go directly to us without your fingerprints being on it. And they, I would say consented, but didn't matter. But it worked out with money came directly to us. Same thing on these frozen assets. Uh, I don't think there's any question whether it's us or UNICEF and others that we can work with teachers, healthcare providers, and of course us working with, uh, with beneficiaries throughout the country is not uh, difficult to do. We're reaching about 14 million people right now, but because of the lack of funding, we're having to cut back, cut back, cut back, and at least try to reach those in knocking on famine's door, but we've got to unleash those funds, whatever it takes, because otherwise you either got to appropriate more dollars. And if you don't, you go have famine, you have destabilization, which means you have more migration coming out of Afghanistan. And you're going to have an extraordinary amount of recruitment by extremist groups uh, for terrorist training activities. Afghanistan is actually our largest, um, our, our longest continuous country presence. We have been operating in Afghanistan since the 1980s through multiple administrations. The government needs to figure out a mechanism to, to program that money um, to partners like us who are in those communities. That, that economy has collapsed. Um, we've seen news accounts of families selling off young young girls for dowry money because there's just no money coming in. Opium production is through the roof. Um, we, we need to be able to start, we, we need to, to help starve, stay, save people from starvation. But money coming directly to your programming does not enrich the no. Taliban in any way, shape, or form. No, and we've been working with Treasury to create different rules and such so that we can program those funds. Dr. Adesina? Uh, I'll have to uh, take a pass because my mandate doesn't cover Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Listen, this is, um, this is long overdue in a world in which we are starved for resources. Here lies, for the time being, $3.5 billion that is ready to go. Um, and you have pointed out that the programming you're running on the ground right now directly benefits the Afghan people without unjustly profiting uh, the Taliban. Um, you are not alone in that club. There are plenty of mechanisms um, that will allow us to do both, save lives and make sure that this money doesn't end up in the hands of the wrong people. And so my hope is that this committee can work with the administration to uh, expedite uh, a mechanism to get that money released. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.